you can't really read it because it happens in the last split second. And like Micheletto also, for example, he's opening his hands a lot. How do you mentally prepare yourself for this situation? So that you can make the last step if the ball is short. Do you also sometimes happen to you that uh, you are late and you have you can attack only in front of you? It's always about managing the risk. Let's say the middle is not arriving perfect. How do you uh, deal with the situation that uh, somebody is uh, defending you? But not over the block, around the block. The one against one, usually defenders uh, go deep. For example, Erwin and Gapet is, you know, flying, you know, showing hands, opening. Yeah. It's important to be fast there. Don't wait the reception. I am here with uh, Paul Puciger, uh, Austrian opposite, uh, who is playing in uh, Italian Serie A1. Uh, he's one of the best scorer in the Italy. And uh, our topic for today podcast is uh, about how to attack uh, from position one uh, when you have a good reception or when you have a good ball after the defense. Because I think it's a very interesting topic, and uh, Paul is uh, experienced uh, 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 opposite. So. I believe that you can uh, give uh, many advice uh, to our listeners and people who will watch this. Hello, everyone. Um, nice to be in this podcast. Um, I'm very, very interested in this format. I watched some videos already and um, happy to be here. So, yeah, um, I think from position one, it's, uh, it's an interesting attack, uh, second line. You have less options than in in first line for sure. Um, I think for me personally, it's a it's a more difficult uh, attack um, because there are a lot of uh, things you have to consider. Um, I think first of all, you need to start um, to to find your position in the approach. Like where do you start in second line? Because uh, obviously, if you have a good uh, reception, if you have a um, a good pass and uh, you're one against one you don't want to step the line this is uh for sure the first uh, mistake to avoid so once you found your your approach distance um for me personally it's uh, it's good to like to start the approach on the line so that you can make the last step if the ball is short in like into the court and if it's on the on the antenna you can you can go straight Because uh, if you have to make the last step outside the court, you lose the vision on the blocker and you don't know where the block is and you basically hit blind. So for me, it's better to go inside the court, always have the block in front of me. So um, yeah, that's that's for sure the, the first step. And then uh, obviously with the perfect reception, uh, most of the times, uh, let's say the middle is not arriving perfect. So first of all, you, you look at the... I look always on on the the outside blocker. Where is the blocker? Does he close the line? Is he staying more inside? Is he closing more the the my diagonal um, uh, spiking uh, option? So once I see the, the the outside blocker, he's leaving me like one ball. I look at the the middle blocker. Is he arriving? Is he committing at the middle? If he's committing at the middle, means that I have all the diagonal space uh, on the court free. So. For me, that's the best option in this way. If it's one against one, go full with all your strength in the diagonal. And um, if the, if you see the middle is making a read block, most of the times with perfect reception, still he can't arrive perfectly. Then you have to you have to understand: does he leave a, a middle like a, a a hole in the middle? Like uh, is he going and? entering the 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 court uh with uh, like leaving a space in the middle or is he like going flying and trying to close the the hole so all these things happen of course uh in like a split second but um these are decisions that i usually make or like things that i try to to focus on like where is the middle is he arriving and trying to close then i go long in the diagonal Or is he like leaving a hole in the middle and then I go full in the middle? And yeah, so that's uh, how I approach the whole uh, uh, attacking situation in, in position one. Uh, of course that uh, you have advantage, you have uh, two meters seven, so you can attack uh, not only in the last meter, but you can attack to the seven, met seven meters. And do you prefer when you have like ideal situation, only one block and you know that uh, 
he's uh, leaving you a little bit line or a little bit diagonal that you go straight into the ground, into the seven meters, or you prefer to go to the nine meters to eight meters because uh, there is always a risk that uh, you will face the block. And if you hit it low over the net, then uh, they will block you. But if you go for long uh, attacks, then there, there is a defense. What is your strategy in this, uh, in this matter? So um, if I have uh, one against one, I try not to hit like the last meter of the court because, you know, it's always about uh, managing the risk, I would say. Like, uh, if I go on the last meter, there's a risk that I spike out. Um, so if I hit like on seven meters, eight meters, there's a lower risk to, to spike out, but also there's the defense because the defense most of the times is inside the court. So... Um, Obviously, first of, first thing you want to pass the block, and second is you beat the you beat the defense. Um, uh, once, um, so I think um, for me personally, if I'm one against one, I hit more into the court, not on the last meter. If I see that I have a stable block, if the block is arriving, I go to go. I try to go long, not to to hit the block low, so that if I hit the block, I go on the fingers and the ball goes long. Mm -hmm. That's uh, that's how I approach it. And uh, how do you deal with with situation? Because uh, when you are facing one block, uh, some uh, uh, outside hitters are going with the like standard block uh, with the hands together. But uh, for example, Erwin and Gapet is you know flying, you know showing hands, opening, yeah, yeah. closing the hands. When you see this, uh, try you uh, do also try sometimes to hit just above their heads because they are you know opening the hands, or uh, do you try to avoid the block all the time? So for me personally, I prepare every game uh, with watching the opponent's block. If I played the game, if I played the opponent already, I, I watch my attacks uh, against the, the outside blockers to see how they move in the block. Uh, do they fly? Do they open their hands? Do they throw their hands into the cross, um, the cross side of the court? So that you get a feeling on about the the, the blocker. Then. During the game, these things you you always like analyze. Okay, the blocker is uh, staying on the line. He's a uh, like brave blocker. Let's say like uh, how you learned everything. This is most of the times like for me, it's more comfortable. If somebody like Inga Pet is uh, like throwing his hands around, it's uncomfortable because you you can't prepare like you can't really read it because it happens in the last split second, and then you see okay, he's there on the line. But then in the last moment he throws his hand and you're basically like just uh let's say like uh unprepared and you you can't foresee this this uh this block so it's it's difficult for sure but uh i think all players have tendencies like micheletto also for example he's opening his hands a lot like throwing his arms uh getting great success because players see him but then don't see his hands. Uh, it's it's uncomfortable against players like this for sure. There's also he he's taking also risks like these blockers take risk uh, to get a lot of block out. But once like there's games where he's just throwing his hands and takes you like four or five times in a row. There's also sometimes a little luck, but uh, for sure mm -hmm. you need to read the situation and through the game you understand. Um, how to deal with the blocker let's say yeah and of course that uh, even if you are attacking in this good situation uh, against a single block uh, who is sometimes uh, you know moving his hands uh, you cannot have uh, like 100% efficiency because nobody is having 100% percent how do you uh, deal with the situation that uh, somebody is uh, defending you i think it's uh, better that somebody will defend you that uh, you make a direct mistake into the antenna into the outside no for sure for sure um Especially one against one, if you have like good approach, good set, you go full into the ball, you spike 100%. If they defend you, of course, uh, you know, this happens in the game. Uh, this is the, the high level volleyball nowadays. There are a lot of good defenders. Still, uh, it's better, for sure, better to, than to make a mistake, of course. Um, but, um, and also after defense, most of the times it's high ball, so... It's not a most of the time. It's not a perfect situation where you have where they have like four attackers running like quicks. So I think um, for sure <laughs> getting defended is better. But uh, point is always better, of course. 
And do you also think or do you see in the game that uh, if a middle blocker is uh, serving, then he's in position five and you don't have liberal, so you are trying more to attack a line because middle blockers are mostly uh, taller guys, not so skilled in the defense. Do you also think about this? Of course, uh, this is also one point where like, if you have a good set and, and you see the line is open and you know the middle blockers in defense, uh, it's for sure a, a better option to, to spike a line than when the libero is there. And also a lot of times tips like around the block, like just to, to lower the arm and, and make the tip like a little late. So the blocker is already going down is a good option. And, and especially one against one, not a lot of players do it. I don't do it often. I, sh I should do it more often maybe. But the one against one, usually the defenders uh, go deep, uh, are on their heels, trying to defend the strong ball, so they are not as as mobile on the on the on the feet to go for the tips. So this can be also a good option, for sure. And about these tips, uh, you mean that uh, it's better to make a tip uh, in position five where there is a middle blocker, or also make some like a power tip uh, in the in the middle of the court because there is no defense. If you make it into diagonal, uh, the the guy from the two or from position one can take it. So what would we be your advice for this? So I think uh, if from good reception over the block, most of the times it's not, for me, it's not the best option. Um, I think more around the block, more to, to mm -hmm. throw it with a quick motion to make like a power tip or to make like a really short one uh, in position fives, but not over the block, around the block. So the ball is lower and there's less time to to, to defend. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, so that's, I think, uh, best. And if you make the power tip, like, more to six than, like, like straight in the middle than, like, on, on some sides, no? So that there is the most way for each possible player to defend, not too close to position five, not too close to position one. There's always... But you know, there's always uh, also tactics in the defense, players read you, so it's not always 100% uh, sure that, there, that uh, it will be a point because also players in defense uh, read the game, read your arm. If you go too early uh, and you show too early, players will get an upright position and go for the tip. So best is to make like a full swing uh, motion and then go late for the tip. Uh, I was also playing opposite uh, some years ago and uh, there is only one uh, position when you are in position five and there is a faster reception that you get a fast set, then it's not so easy to uh, get in the right position for your approach uh, and uh, some players are having troubles with this. Uh, do you also sometimes happen to you that uh, you are late and you have you can attack only in front of you because you are like rushing uh, to get to the spot and just uh, attacking uh, in front of you? Yes, yes, for sure. Um, this is also like, uh, I think uh, in the efficiencies in this season, you can see that when we are in, in set the position two, so when I'm in five, the, the efficiency is getting a little lower. I think it's because a lot of times when the, the serve is hard and fast, there's not much time to go directly to your starting approach position where, from what we started in the beginning. Um, I think the best way is to just go directly, run as fast as you can to, to your position, to your starting approach, approach, approach position, so that you are as prepared as if you start from position one. Because the starting position always is your routine, is your uh, like start. If you once get out of this a little bit, everything gets different, the view of the block gets different. So it's important to be fast there. Don't wait the reception and and just go as fast as possible so that you are in your comfortable starting position uh, if it's not possible or of course maybe you you cut the court uh mm -hmm. in position one and you have to start the approach a little bit inside and then go from inside to outside yeah but I see uh, there are some, uh, like, Atanasiewicz, he's never going on the line, you know, he's always going one, two meter inside the court and have, yes. he has a great crossbody attack and there are many, many opposite like this. And uh, uh, also about your game, because uh, you are, you know, playing in one of the best competitions in the world, uh, you are studying your 
your opponents, uh, you know uh, how they are playing, uh, you are preparing yourself, but uh, do you also spend time uh, with yourself because, uh, you know, you are making a lot of attacks, you have uh, 300, 400 attacks in the season, and do you also watch yourself what is going uh, uh, well, what uh, you can uh, improve, and uh, do you make uh, also your, your own analysis of your game after each game or after the season? Of course, uh, I, I try to watch uh, as many videos of myself. I always uh, rewatch the games. Uh, if I have uh, the time and the chance, also the, some practices where I know, okay, maybe today, especially the things that I think that didn't go well, it's always uh, it's always easy to watch uh, good games because you have a good feeling. But uh, most of the times, the the, um, uh, the important stuff, the the stuff you need to improve, are obviously in the games that you didn't play well. So these are uh, these are for sure things um, I watch a lot. Um, and I also then try to to already implement in the practice. So maybe if I see that uh, I I lower my elbow, I try to go high with my elbow and try to hit the long balls uh, around the block, over the block, on the fingers. So these are things I I, I like to work, which um, is like daily business for me but uh, still needs to be like every day repeated, 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 because once you you lose like your focus on what you, you need to think of, um, it's uh, it's going always a little down, no? And uh, what would you be your advice to the players? Because uh, not every day is a sunny day. Sometimes you are playing, uh, even if you have a good feeling in your body, uh, you, are, you cannot uh, close uh, or score many points, even against the single block. Uh, How do you mentally prepare yourself for this situation and what uh, would you advise to the players if, you know, uh, one said they are not scoring and uh, somebody is already starting to shaking, not trusting to th uh, themselves? Uh, what is your approach to this situation? I think you you have to understand what is your best shot, what is your best attack, what is your best uh, uh, spiking uh, direction and... Uh, Try to find your your strengths in this uh, in your best attack, um, so that if you do the things that you know best, you're more comfortable. You don't you try you tend to make less mistakes because if you start to then try to change something, everything you most of the times get gets worse because you're not comfortable. You're you're in stress. You're uh, a little nervous. Then you try to spike some ball that you never tried before and. Um, I I recommend not to do this. Instead, uh, stay with your best attack and try to to work on these things and to work on on your your attacking positions, and then try to get out of this um, let's say emotional hole if you if you want to say so um, through your strengths and with uh, for that you need to know what are your strengths and what are what is your best spike. And it also depends uh, a lot on your connection with the setter because the setter knows how you are performing. He's uh, the head, he's a computer in the game and he should also know that uh, maybe now you had a tough period uh, so I would not give you another third ball against a triple block. Maybe I will wait for a good reception. He will play with you and do also speak or communicate with the setter that uh, now I want more balls now. Maybe, you know, g give it somewhere else. For sure. Um... You know, this year I'm in a comfortable position that I play with the setter for the fifth year um, with Santi. So um, we know each other already pretty well. Um, but of course, uh, you know, if uh, if an attacker is in a, like uh, let's say difficult situation uh, where he is uh, not scoring, not performing as well, it's uh, it's easier, and that's also a big part of the setter's job to put the player back in the game um, I always uh, communicate of course with everybody on the court but a lot also with the setter and try to uh, you know tell him okay also now I feel good maybe now you know um, give me some balls uh, give me or maybe if I'm in a difficult situation like give me one free ball like one perfect reception so that I get back in the game especially maybe before the service uh, to have a better feeling So these are for sure things that uh, that help to and uh, are necessary, especially on the highest level, to have a good communication on the court. And uh, the last question: What would be your advice? Uh, one single advice uh, in your eyes most uh, important for 
out uh, for opposite, you know, uh, in regarding to attacking this uh, quick balls from uh, position one. It's about the approach, it's about uh, hitting uh, high, it's about hitting the diagonal, or what is in your eyes the most important? I see, I know that it's not only about one advice, but if you can pick up only one advice, what would be this advice? Um, I think uh, to, to like in general, to find uh, your best ball like uh, where are you best performing which ball can you spike the best whether the ball is a little short whether the ball is a little uh, like perfect on the antenna do you need it more inside do you need it uh, like more on the three meters so to to speak there a lot with the communication um, back row attack from position one is a lot of with uh, about the connection uh, with the setter for me so to find there the best connection and then try to have all angles so to be very versatile to have the line to have the the ball in the middle of the block to have the ball around the block when the block is uh, coming and closed and so to be very versatile and to have uh, a lot of options because uh, every situation in the game is different and um, so you need to adapt a lot volleyball is a lot about adaption to see what the the, the opponent is doing and then react and um if you are uh, if you have a lot of options a lot of shots um you can manage a lot of situations and that's uh, i think uh my advice to the to the players out there uh, it's great advice i'm speaking in my video sometimes that uh, the every attacker outside his clear middle blocker opposite should be unpredictable because if you have only one type of attack on one diagonal you know the defense in one game in one set will be there and will be defending you if you are attacking yes. only into one direction so you have to have a lot of weapons in your arsenal and be ready to attack all these uh, all these uh, all these hits and make a lot of points uh, and uh, i would like to thank you for all your advice for all your tips and i believe that uh, many opposites uh, uh, will take uh, something from your advice and will get uh, better because this is uh, my goal to make the players better and thank you again for your time and your advice thank you so much ciao